So Heath Phillips joined the Navy when he was just 17 years old. But what started as a dream to serve his country quickly turned into a nightmare he could not escape. Watch this. Growing up, Heath Phillips knew he wanted to serve his country. My goal was to technically be a lifer, which means I would spend 20 years in the service. So that was an easy choice for me. In 1988, Phillips joined the Navy shortly after his 17th birthday. A lot of the older guys kind of put me under their wing. And so it was like a nice kinmanship bond. But when he reported to his first post in New Jersey, things quickly changed. Phillips and six of his shipmates went out in New York City, where he says they sexually assaulted him. I woke up to like the feeling of my clothes being yanked on. And I opened up my eyes and there was a, uh, one of the six guys was standing above me, um, relieving himself in my face. And I remember trying to twist away and somebody was trying to grab at my private areas. Phillips notified his superiors of the incident immediately. I reported to him what happened. And instead of, are you okay? It's one of the, it, he was like, you're a liar. And how old are you? And I said, well, I'm 17. He said, oh, that's your problem. You're homesick. You must be a mama's boy. Because stuff like this doesn't happen. Philip says after the first complaint, things got worse. I dealt with 49 days straight of being beaten. I mean, it wasn't always sexual. There was more assaults. You would fight back. It would get worse. He says it got so bad, he tried to take his own life. And I tried hanging myself in the back of the storage room. And... I'll never forget this guy coming, smacking me across my face and telling me I needed to man up and make these guys stop. In despair, Phillips called his father. He told me to come home. And it was something I never imagined a diehard military guy telling his kid to go AWOL. Joining me now, Heath Phillips. Heath, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So your dad was a military guy too? Yes, ma'am. And he told you to go AWOL? Yes. It was something... I, I, I would never imagine my father saying to somebody. Mm -hmm. But that's how bad it had gotten for you. It was horrifying, yes. It was very, very bad, yes. So you ultimately did return to that very same ship. Is that right? Yes. Um, after going AWOL, um, I didn't go back because I was scared to be there. And I ended up getting in trouble by being AWOL and stealing hot dogs to try surviving. And they sent me back to the same ship. And the problem with that is that the, the men who you say assaulted you repeatedly were on that ship. It's like, a, it's like a prison of sorts. You're all on board together. There was no escape unless you left the ship. I worked with them. You sleep with them. You eat with them. You know, you're on a big tin can, as I call it. And it's 24-7. And, and what happened when you went back on the ship? Right back to the same thing. Um, what's funny is I never got in trouble for going AWOL, uh, you know, in the first initial um, parts, but I was always put back in the same birthing area, the living quarters as my attackers, and it was always right back to repetitive being assaulted. And it culminated in a particularly gruesome incident in which you say you were raped. Raped on more than one occasion, but um, the worst was when um, he tried raping me, and he ended up sodomizing me with a toilet brush handle oh until I passed out. Oh, my God. You, in so many of these cases, especially involving male victims, they don't report. Men have a particular level of shame when it comes to these things. And you actually did report. Right? I mean, like, you, you were jumping up and down about this. One of the things I was taught when I was younger was... Um, not to be a, like an innocent bystander. If something happens, I always stand up and say something. You know, I think that's part of the military culture for my family. So that was what I was instilled and believed in was you got to tell when something's wrong. And unfortunately, no matter how many times I told, they would not respond in a save me sort of way. The message was always man up, as you said in the piece. Toughen up. Toughen up. Get a backbone. Um, as people don't realize, I had six attackers, so 
being 130 pounds. No, there's no, old, there's no manning up through yes. any of that. M- manning up is going and demanding accountability for what they've done to you. And, and manning up is, of course, on their end, doing something about it. I know that you say the men who attacked you, they claimed it was part of an initiation. You know, this is like, it's like a fraternity of sorts, and this is a test. Um, do you believe that that was widespread in the Navy when you were in it? I don't know about widespread, but um, on my ship alone, two of the people that were court-martialed, not over my case, but over 17 other cases. So there was more than one victim on board my ship, which I had never had knowledge of. And, and then they were placed working with you. Yes. And these are the men who he claims ultimately attacked him. So it's like you look at the history and... It's not that difficult to predict what might happen. Um, The problem is Heath's life uh, went downhill after that, as you can understand, which happens to a lot of sexual assault victims. And it became a nightmare. But he recently received an unexpected phone call that has changed everything. We'll be right back with that piece of the story. We're back now with Heath Phillips, who was just 17 years old in 1988 when he says he was sexually assaulted by a group of fellow sailors. He says he reported it to his superiors, but was told he was just a mama's boy and that he needed to toughen up. Welcome back, Heath. So ultimately, you refused to re- remain on board this ship, and they offered you an other than honorable discharge, yes. which you took to get out of there. And you say your life after that became a nightmare. How so? Um, I spent over 20 years as a uh, raving drunk. It was to stop nightmares, flashbacks, anxiety. I couldn't hold a job. Trying to be near men was very difficult. I had zero trust factor for anybody. And so my life kind of was like really spiraled out of control. And then in 2009, you had the aha moment. What was it? So... Driving home, which I don't recommend to anybody driving drunk, I was so drunk, I was doing the one eye drive, oh. and I took my seatbelt off. I was probably at the lowest point that a person could really get in life, and I wanted to uh, end my life. I wanted to find a tree to plow my vehicle into just to end it, and... I thank God today that it never happens. Somewhere between there and home, I had blacked out. And when I woke up the next day, that's when the aha moment came on. Um, I cried for the first time since I was 17. You know, 20 years later, I actually cried. And it's like all of them things just rolled into one. And I decided my life was not going to be like this anymore. I was not going to be a victim I was not allowing this to control my life, and I kind of attributed it to, to like when I went from being a victim to becoming a survivor because mm-hmm. that was the step I needed. So there began your your journey toward righting the wrongs that had happened to you as well. Yes, and you wanted to change that status from an other than honorable discharge to a general discharge, and that would have allowed you to to receive. Well, it would have changed your, your, the way you were looked at, the way you looked at yourself. Um, so you, you went after the Navy for that change in status, not one, not two, three times, and they said, no, 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 we're not changing it. But Heath went after them a fourth time. And in May of this year, what did they say? Uh, May 30th of this year, um I got the official, um, I now have an honorable discharge. Fully granted. Dated back to the date that I was released from the military. Honorable. More than he even was asking for. Um, Listen, with us in the audience is Colonel Don Christensen, former chief prosecutor of the U.S. Air Force and president of the group Protect Our Defenders. And you've devoted your life to helping vets like, like Heath. Yes. How rare is it for men who are sexual assault victims, especially in the armed forces, to come out with the truth? It it is so incredibly rare. Heath is like a shining example. Uh, The strength that he has shown. Uh, Most men can't do it because of the shame. 
Uh, that he did it when he was 17 and 18 years old is incredible. That he's fought and persevered is just, it's, it's uh, something that the other male survivors can look at. And there are over 6,000 last year in the military uh, to say, yes, I can get Have you seen justice. more in the wake of Heath's case? I mean, have you seen as... Absolutely. I protect our defenders. We help veterans like Heath. And uh, we've had a lot of calls since his story broke. Wow. Thank you for the good work you do. Heath, all the best to you. Uh, and thank you for your service.